Hello and welcome to this next episode of this YouTube series, Being Effective with Upnote. We're now thinking about all of the different ways that we can use this wonderful application, Upnote, to make us more effective, more productive in everyday life. A few weeks ago, I put up a podcast all about year planning, and today I want to show you how I do my year planning within the Upnote application. No matter how far into the year you are, it's never too late to make the most of the time that you have left. It's always worth giving your attention to that. Even if it's 11.59 on the 31st of December, making that final minute of the year just a little bit better than it would be if you did nothing is always worth doing. Right now it's the middle of January, so we're not in that position. And now is the perfect time, if you've not done it, to think about how to plan the rest of your year. So we're gonna do that in Upnote today. The best way, to plan a year, it's much more intuitive, personally I think, than the best way to plan your day or your week. When I plan my day and when I plan my week, I follow a very rigid checklist. It's a tight process. But I don't do that when I plan my year. It's a creative activity. A word of warning before we start. You've no idea what's gonna happen over the next 12 months. Now, that uncertainty, it doesn't make planning a year pointless but we do need to bear it in mind. Anything can happen, both things that we might consider good or things that we might understand to be bad. Either of them can totally change the game for you. So this uncertainty, it leads us to humility and it leads to ideas and creativity in a way that it's never gonna lead us to firm, rigid, definite plans. So with all that in mind, Let's go in Upnote and let's start planning our next year. Now the place to start when year planning for me is a blank note. So I'm just going to create a new blank note. Now you can use a blank note for planning your year or you can use a template. Now the template that I would normally use, and there's loads out there that you can get, but the one I prefer is actually from Carl Pauline. So it's available on his website as a PDF download. Uh, his annual planning template. So I'm just going to click download on that uh, and that'll download that. And you can see it here. Um, you've just got ideas, what you'd like to change about yourself, what you'd like to change about lifestyle, etc, etc, etc. Now what I've actually done is I've created a template of this uh, within Upnote, uh, a blank one. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my new note here and I'm going to delete that, select from templates annual planning 2024 and that brings the template within Upnote. And so really the way this works is it is kind of like a blank note but just with a set of prompts to help you think through your year. So thank you so much to Carl for producing this. The only thing I change in mine is... Um, bucket list. I don't really like the idea of a bucket list. I've got a couple of blog posts on my website uh, to do with something called the impossible list, which is an idea that I got from Thomas Frank. Uh, and I'll pop links to those, those blog posts down below so you can read them. But that would be the template. It is worth saying though, you don't actually have to use Upnote at this stage. The idea here is this is a sort of a free-flowing creative exercise for you to think and brainstorm about all of the different things that you might want to do or think about or achieve in your year. And it may be that at this stage, the best thing to do is to grab a notebook and a pen. That's brilliant. Do that if that suits you. Now, the idea is once you've completed this exercise that you've got a long list of different things. Now, it may well be that you follow this template uh, or something similar and you have it broken down into these different categories. So. Here's a few of the ideas that I've written down. Establish healthy routines for normal life. Be intentional in deepening and strengthening my walk with Jesus. Maturing my faith. Grow to 1,500 YouTube subscribers. Buy a decent laptop. Run 10K regularly, etc., etc., etc. They can be any ideas you want from across all areas of your life. They might be tasks. They might be projects. They might be goals. They might be habits to form. They might be routines that you want to build into everyday life, or they might be areas of your life that you want to give time and focus and attention to, whether that's family or your health or whatever. At the moment, you're just throwing ideas on a blank page 
or into a template like this, whether that's in a notebook or on an app, you're throwing ideas down. And I would recommend that you take a good two or three weeks over this process if you can. You can refine it as you go. If we were doing this prior to the start of the year, then maybe I would say, as Carl does, take two or three months over it. We're not in that position because it's January. So take a couple of weeks, jot down ideas as they come to you as you go about normal life. And then you'll have this list by the end of it. Now, it's probably helpful if you did write things down in a notebook to just snap them into UpNote. And so as you can see here, I've just brought that note in and it's got the picture there that I took of my notebook. Uh, let's just pop a header in so I know So here's the thing, once you've done all that, you're going to have a list with a lot of ideas on it. You might have a few picture notes where you've taken pictures with your phone of things that you've written. You might have a few just simple header notes where you've just written a quick note on your phone or something or something that you would like to do. What I would do here is I would create a new notebook within my planning notebook called 2024 for this year. And then all of these notes... Uh, would just be brought into 2024, the planning one, for the purposes of this video. So they're all in one simple notebook. And then what you need to do is you need to go through all of these notes, all of these ideas, these goals, these projects, these tasks, whatever it is, just scan through them and search for themes. It's kind of like what Tiago Forte calls distill in his um, code, um, Capture, Organize, Distill, Express. So the D is distill. Find the essence, he says. So you need to go through all of these different ideas, different thoughts, and search for themes. Now, what I then did was I created a new note. And um, let's just call it areas of focus. And I created a table. Let's go for four by four. And Broadly speaking, there are four broad areas of my life. They are family, personal, um, effective faith. I don't need a three in there. It's not a password. And my paid employment. So create a table. I'm going through a blue and orange phase at the moment. So I'm going to make the text blue, uh, the background blue. And I'm going to make them headers. Mm, let's go for heading three, actually. There we go, heading three. And then in each of those four areas, you're going to write out the four or five most important areas or things or projects to focus on across the whole year. That's what I did at this point. Now, here's just an example of what it might look like when you've done that. Now, I've got a few areas to think about for family. I've got a few areas to think about personally for myself, for effective faith, and then for work. Now, obviously, this isn't what my actual one looked like because I don't want to put that online, especially when it comes to work and plans and things like that. But this just gives you an idea. So you've got some areas to think about, for example, fitness and study and um, uh, in the work core area one and core area two. You might have some specific projects like buy new IT for family and home or Project X and Project Z. But then there's also things that wouldn't necessarily be an area of work or a project, but things like having fun. One of the things that I want to do with my content creation process is just enjoy it. I'm not doing this for any reason other than I think it's valuable and I enjoy it and I want to have more fun with it. And then more input, that's just a throwback to Short Circuit if you've ever seen that film. Great film if you've not seen it, Short Circuit. But the basic point is, is that in order to be able to produce output, I need to have more input. So I want to spend more time reading, more time learning, more time growing. So I've got these four different things, four different areas, 16 things to focus on across the course of 2024. And so what I then did next is I took a copy of this table, which you can do in UpNote, and I just pasted it in. And what I did was I deleted all of this, because I don't need it for right now, and then I changed that to Q1, and then these represent, as you probably guessed, the four quarters of the year. 
You can't do everything all at once, so it's not going to be possible for me to tackle all 16, or all 20 in my case, of these things in January. So I need to spread them across the year and think, well, when do I actually want to think about these things? When do I actually want to do these things? Now, one of the features they've released in UpNote recently is a is a big improvement to their tables now. So I might say, actually, this is a key priority. So I'm going to put that in, in Q1. That's a priority as well. So that's going in Q1. Uh, I'm going to rest more then and actually then as well. Um, I want to have fun all the time because that's important. Project Z actually is not going to happen until then. And you just go through and you think about when you're going to focus on these different things across the quarter. It doesn't need to be perfect. What you're coming up with now is not a rigid plan, but a guide to guide you through the year as you do your more focused planning with your quarters, your months, your weeks and your days. Just bear that in mind. This is not intended to be perfect and set in stone for the next 12 months. Now, as you go through your ideas list, your longer list of all of the ideas of the things that you wanna do, there's gonna be a few things that you need to do as you, as you go through it. So firstly, you're not gonna be able to achieve everything in a year. So some of those ideas on your ideas list, you're just gonna to need to defer to the future, that's fine. But the other thing is you'll notice that some of the things on the list are distinct projects. So for example, buy new IT, buy a new computer, or Project X or Project Z, they are projects that I need to tackle at some point in 2024. Others of them, like fitness or study, are areas. I want to focus on those areas more there's no necessarily distinct, discrete project involved there, but that is going to require new habits, new routines, new practices, day by day, week by week, month by month, and so on through the year. Others of them will be goals, like grow the YouTube channel. That is a target that I'm aiming at. There is a goal there. So as you go through your list, you'll notice that there are different things, and each of those different things will require a different approach as you go through the year. So let's just take a look at this buy new IT. Now that is a project. Now how I wanna handle that at this stage is I'm gonna come down here and this is a future project. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna create a new nested notebook for this project because that is something that I'm gonna to wanna to tackle in the future. And what I'm gonna do for right now is I'm gonna copy the link to that and I'm gonna replace that text uh, with the link uh, and I'm going to do that let's say I was going to buy new IT in Q2 I'm going to do that as well now that's important and we'll see why that's important in future episodes when we come to plan quarters months and weeks if it's a smaller project let's say for example project Z is a smaller project well what I might do there is just in my future projects notebook I will just create a new note in there and just call it project Z so I've got a note for one project and a notebook for another project. Now, it's arbitrary, it's just my decision as to whether I create a note or a notebook. That's for you to decide, but that's how I do it. Now, with something like doing more reading, that is a goal, that is a habit that I'm gonna to need to form. What I would do is I would create a task in Todoist to think about how to do that. And that might involve, um, for example, when I actually come to think about it, it might involve, for example, creating a new note, calling it reading, and then just brainstorming some ideas. Read on the bus, read at lunchtime, read for 20 minutes every day before bed. That kind of thing. So the question is, as you look through this, what projects do you have? What habits and routines do you need to build in? And then ask yourself the question, well, how and when am I going to build those in? And then the last thing I do in my annual planning in UpNote is I prime my future planning. You can do this right now or you can leave it and come back to it for another day. So what I would do is I would create a new note, a note that is, for every quarter. And then I would, and I would take this, copy it and then just paste that element into there so I know what my focus is for the quarter. 
And if there are other things on your longer list, specific things that you want to do in Q1, then I would bring those in here as well. And then you leave that there for later for when you come to actually plan your quarter. And that is it. That is how I plan my year in UpNote. Now you're going to see in the coming videos when I think about quarter planning, when we think about month planning, week planning, day planning, how actually I build on this and I flesh it out. But for now, all I need is a guide. All I need is something to come back to each quarter, each month to keep me moving through the year. So that's why I do it this way. That's why I do it in such a broad way. I should caveat this. Some of the things you've seen in this video are much vaguer than they would be for me in real life. That is simply because I don't want to put anything too specific online. So thank you very much for watching. Please do tune into future videos where we flesh this out a bit more and we look at quarter plans. Hit the like button below if you've liked this video and found it valuable. And please, please subscribe to my channel and check out these other videos on the screen now. Hopefully they'll be helpful for you. See you on the next video.